right. All right, there we go. Let's go. All right. Um, all right. Today, uh, obviously, I'm not going to be. I'm not uh, in class today. Uh, my kids feel under the weather, just a little cold. Um, but that'd be said, sorry. Keep keeping him home today um, instead of going to daycare. Um, so um, hopefully, you have your earphones on you today. I'll kind of walk you through with with what you need to be doing. Um, second of all, today's First part of class will be more of like a notes day. It's why you're going to be lecturing. It's why I'm lecturing on this. You'll be kind of filling in as we go. Um, somebody do me a favor. Um, and, the, and there's a table right next to my desk, um, the one against the, the chalkboard. Um, there's guided notes down there. Uh, it's in one of the black bins. I, think, I believe it's the it's the very bottom. There's like a black tower uh, like with like different slots in it. I want to say it's the bottom slot um should have guided notes for you guys for this lecture it should say crime scene or something along those lines um a copy of it's also on here as well on like the google classroom so you can kind of ma match up with what you see on there with what you see on the hard copy um for what you guys get um so if somebody would please pick a reins and grab that and pass it out to everybody i would greatly appreciate it um also if you would do me a favor and remind the sub to make sure they spray down uh, the classroom after the class, I'm going to greatly appreciate it with that little, you know, that little thing that I, that, like the mister. Um, I greatly appreciate that as well. All right. So anyway, we're going to be going through the crime scene today. Um, kind of walking in through some, you know, important uh, facets that we uh, were going to accomplish today. So do that with this. No problem. Uh, let's go. Um, all right. So anyway. All right. So crime scene. Um Obviously, uh, the goal of any crime scene um, is for the investigation is to document, collect evidence at the scene uh, of the crime. Um, this will allow them to make sure that they have every piece of evidence that they're going to need, uh, whether it's seen or unseen. Um, a lot of the crime scene, you know, nowadays especially, is forensic uh, things that you can't see: uh, fingerprints, blood um etc are things kind of behind behind the scene kind of people um so the goal of the crime scene is to basically keep it in its most purest form uh, to document everything to collect everything um because that's very important in terms of later on um to kind of put all the pieces together so again a very very vital part of the process for um you know for the you know the trial and for things to come later on in the thing but to keep it as intact as possible all right so there's something called the the, the locard exchange uh is created by dr edmund um locard um and he you know as you kind of kind of see up here in the, in the uh, notes here on the, uh, on the slide uh, every criminal can be connected to a crime by small particles carried from the scene um, so more or less, it's kind of what you know, I just talked about with like the forensic component of it, you know, things that you cannot see physically or police officers when they arrive to a crime scene, you know, some things are not always visible to the naked eye. Um, you know, you got fingerprints that you sometimes you can't see, uh, blood sometimes you can't, that, that you can't see, um, that's on clothes or it's scattered throughout the house, um, hair particles, et cetera. Um, so he, so according to this, you know, the local exchange, they believe that every, that every criminal leaves something behind, um, at the scene to be collected. Um, so that's why it kind of goes, by, as I just said before, it's very important for the first responders at the scene to secure the crime scene. That is vital. That's very important. You want to make sure that you are limiting the amount of people who come in and out of the crime scene. Um, because, because here's part of the key, because whenever two objects come in contact with one another uh, a cross transfer of evidence tends to happen so if, you know typically when you see when you go to a crime scene you see the yellow tape around the crime scene that's there because the, the, the police want to set up a perimeter um they want to close off that scene nobody goes in until the investigators until the forensic people go in there so they can see the scene at its most purest form if they allow people to go into the crime scene you're going to get cross contamination um, of the evidence, um, and you don't want that. That could lead to a mistrial. That could lead to a whole bunch of problems for a police department. 
Um, so that's why it's very, very, very important that you keep it at the most pure sense. Uh, so the intensity, duration, and nature of the materials in contact determine the extent of the transfer. So that's why, again, you want to create as, 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 as less contact as you can uh, in the uh, area of a crime. So that's the low credit exchange, vocabulary term you need to know. All right, so evidence, so something called direct evidence. Um, direct evidence is first-hand observations. Uh, so these are eyewitness accounts. So this is why, after, you know, during a crime scene, this is typically when you, you know why you see people going from house to house and you see interviews to see kind of the who's, the what, you know, what do they hear, um, what time, um, they see anything out of the ordinary. Um, it could be videos, it could be confessions, um, but that is it would be direct evidence. Video, uh, confessions, and eyewitness accounts would be a prime example of that. Direct evidence. Um, eyewitness accounts uh, by victims or eyewitnesses. Um, eyewitness accounts can vary considerably from person to person. Um, so that's why typically the more information, the more witnesses you have, sometimes the better off you are in terms of trying to piece everything together, uh, the stories, see if they kind of align or match up. Um, eyewitness accounts can be un can be unreliable and have led to wrongful imprisonment um, of suspects. Um, so it'd be you know you kind of have to sometimes take that sometimes with a grain of salt. Uh, obviously, it's important uh, for prosecutors or defense lawyers to get eyewitness accounts. Um, but sometimes those can be unreliable, and we'll, we'll talk more about this um, at a later date. Um, actually, well, you kind of see this here with the, with the Innocence Project around today. Uh, this is a project that's aimed at uh, freeing the wrongfully convicted. 87% um, of all wrongful convictions were as a result of a flawed eyewitness account. Um, so, you know, that's why you know, eyewitness accounts, again, as I mentioned before, are sometimes very difficult um, at times. And we'll kind of get more to that later on, as I talked about. Um, so part of that reason, what affects our observations? Um, our brains do not pay attention to all information around us. Um, sometimes your perception, you, I mean, we all interpret things differently. We all interpret our senses differently compared to other people. Uh, sometimes our perception is skewed by our emotions and the state of mind, uh, our prior experiences, maybe our biases. Um, Short-term memory only lasts a short period of time. Uh, so that so that's just kind of why sometimes, you know, eyewitness accounts. Again, all there's a lot of factors that go into it um, in terms of why so many people have been wrong, wrongfully convicted based on eyewitness accounts. Um, yeah, distance that matters. Um, you know, how sure can you be if you're from 100 yards away or 50 yards away or 30 yards away? How sure can you be with all the you know my you know details of somebody um, if they actually did the crime? There's also something called something called circumstantial evidence. Uh, this is indirect evidence that can be used to imply a fact, but it's not directly prove something. So an example would be of this, uh, finding a suspect's gun at a crime scene is circumstantial evidence that the suspect was there. Um, you need to find more, um, more that would link somebody to the crime than just finding somebody's weapon there. Um, so that's, you know, prime example of what circumstantial evidence is. Uh, other types of circumstantial evidence, you have physical, there could be uh, um, physical evidence, could be fibers or weapons or bullets or shell casings, paint chips, documents, imprints, prints, shoes, tires, tool marks, soil, drugs. That's physical evidence. Obviously, that's some, the more that you have of these things, the better off you are in terms of trying to get somebody convicted. There's biological evidence. Obviously, it kind of speaks for itself. It's biological things, body, body parts, blood fluids, hair, blood, uh, fibers, feathers, wood, um, whatever. So it's something that's more biological based. Uh, and then, then there's something called trace evidence. Um, so this is small but measurable amounts of physical or biological. So this might be a mix. So trace means sometimes there's a, tra there's a trace of snow or a trace of rain. Things are a very small amount. They're not calling for downpours or inches of snow. Trace means very, very small. Um, physical or biological, uh, small or biological material found at the crime scene. So strands of hair, it could be fingerprints, drops of blood, DNA, pollen, gunshot residue. Um, so that's what trace evidence is. It could be one of these things or a mixture of both, but again, very small amounts will be trace evidence. 
So the more circumstantial evidence there is, the greater weight it carries. So probability and statistics tend to rise but with the more uh, of these things that they have, or, or, or I'm sorry, are able to collect from the crime scene. Um, evidence can also be divided into a variety of categories too. You got your class evidence, uh, narrows evidence to a group of persons or things. Uh, so a whole class of people. Um, so this can be used to exclude some suspects. So example, this would be like blood types. Uh, can be A, B, A, B, or O. So finding one type at a crime scene narrows down the suspects to a smaller group. Um, so obviously when you take a blood sample from a crime scene, obviously you get the blood type, you get one of these A, B, A, B, or O, uh, and then from there you could shrink your, you know, your process, your, your suspects tool or pool down a lot based upon that. And then there's individual evidence actually speaks for itself. It narrows evidence down to a single person or thing. So fingerprints, handwriting, DNA, um, can be sometimes be physical matches. Class evidence may become more individualized though, because obviously as you're starting to find more evidence, you start narrowing down things. Uh, so for example, blue jeans, we may not, we may be able to narrow them down by brand material size. Oh, my bad. Um, but if worn, they might have rips or stains to help individualize them. Um, so anyway, uh, let's kind of skip that. So the importance of evidence, what's important about the, having evidence? Uh, they can prove a crime has been committed and set the, invest, and set the scene for the investigation. Uh, it can back up witness testimony or prove it false. Uh, it can link a suspect with a victim or with a crime scene. It can determine the identity of people associated with a crime. It allows investigators to reconstruct a crime scene. So again, the more evidence you have, it can prove the things, can prove you know, your testimony, can prove your witness accounts, can kind of back things up. It's very important. All right, so the crime scene investigation team. So what you have, so perfect, the first police officer to arrive on the scene, it will be the first, obviously, will be on the scene of the crime. Then you'd have your backup police would come up and possibly your district attorney. Um, your medics would come if, if needed. And then from there, usually, the, again, the first police officers would, would, would set up the the, the perimeter, the yellow taping. And then from there, the investigators, detectives would come in and, and would analyze all of the data there, analyze the scene. You got your medical examiner would come, your photographer to take pictures, and your lab experts. So that's usually who you would have on the crime scene um, who would, or who would actually be allowed onto the crime scene. Here's the seven S's of crime scene investigation. One, you want to secure the scene. First officers would secure who is on the scene, then you want to separate your witnesses so they can't co so they can't corroborate a story. So we'll kind of get into that here in a minute. Let me see what we got here actually with time. Actually, you know what? We'll stop there actually. Uh, and I want you guys to get started on your assignment. Um, so we're in short on this, on this thing. Um, so you can stop here in your notes. So what I want you guys to do is go to, go to, go to our Google Classroom. You'll see what will be posted. Um, your, your, obviously, your lecture will be posted through here. But you're going to be reading, reading through the instructions. Uh, so I re we already did number one here for you. Number two, you're going you're gonna to complete the CSI web adventure, um, which you'll see right here. You click on it. Here's the website that you need. Uh, you just follow the instructions. Uh, go to the forensic biology section, follow Greg. So, let's see. So, got case one. Just play as a guest. It's fine. Start it. Adobe Flash Player is blocked, so it should be fine. Anyway, you guys can figure this out. You're going to be completing the web quest. Um, what kind of walking yourself through this case one, rookie training, and so forth. You go through that. What is DNA profiling? It's pretty cool in terms of what they have you guys do. It's very hands-on. I think you'll like it. Um, and then you go to the firearms and tools and do the training demos there. Let me know if you have any issues or problems. I'll have my email on me. Let me know. Um, you can finish this and you'll turn it in.
other than that, that's going to be about all that you're going to need.